Hello, I made a tutorial way back showing you how you could drag a sprite with the mouse. Now this solution wasn't ideal because it moved every sprite under the mouse, and this might not always be desirable behavior. Since then, I've had a few people ask how to move just the top sprite. If you follow me on Twitter, you might have seen me ask around for a solution to this, but I'll take you through my solution, and I invite you to share yours. Before we dive into the code and show you how it works, let's see what the end result is. So we have three different shapes here. We've got stars, we've got circles, and we've got squares. Now, if I stack the stars together, then if I try and drag the group, then the only the top one will move. Again, for however many stars there are in the pile. The same goes for the circles and the square, there's only one square. Now, what makes this solution a little bit more flexible than the previous solution is that I can have a star and I can have a circle and a square piled up on each other and I can move all of them together. Let's take a look at the draggable sprite scene. Now, I've chosen to use an area 2D as the root node just because I can take advantage of some of these collision object 2D signals. However, there is a warning here and the warning is we need a collision shape 2D. So how do we get it? How do we get it? Okay, let's find out. If you wanted to add a sprite to the draggable sprite, you can go up here and we can search for a sprite, not an animated sprite, a normal sprite will do. And let's go back to the inspector and drag any sprite that we want. I'm going to use a star in the texture. But what's great about using sprites is we can generate this shape from the actual sprite. So we do that by going up to the top here. And if we create a collision polygon 2D sibling, then we have this preview window pop up. The defaults are fine for purpose. So wonderful, we have this beautiful shape here with a collision polygon 2D in the shape of a star. Let's go back to the signals. If we go over to the node tab on the right of the inspector, we're gonna use these three signals here. So if an input event happens in this star area, then that's gonna fire off. If the mouse enters this star area, that's also gonna fire off. And if it leaves the star area, that's also going to fire off as well. So let's have a look at the script then. We're gonna go up here and we're gonna click the script button to open that up. Now this shares some code with the last version that I, I put up. The actual dragging logic isn't very different to the original. However, what is different is working out whether this sprite is on top. So let me take you through the example. I'm just gonna run this scene and our star is up here. So when I click down and start to move the mouse, then you can see that it drags along. So what's happening here? First off, the mouse enters the shape. Let's see what happens when it enters the shape. Well, we add this instance to the group hovered and group is a variable which we can define at the top here. It's an export variable, which means if we click on the scene, we can define it in the editor. So at the minute, the group is set to draggable. So when the mouse enters the shape, it's going to be added to draggable hovered. And similarly, if the mouse exits the shape, then it's removed from the group. So what do we do with this group? Well, when we get an input event on this shape, we call this function here on input event. If the action is a UI touch input, which we can have a look in the project settings here. If we go over to project settings, input map. If we scroll down here, I've made a new input action called UI touch, which basically incorporates the mouse click and touch devices. And we know that because we, when we edit this, we've chosen all devices and that makes it compatible with touchscreens as well. So if there is a click or a touch event, we do the following. We check if this instance is on top and the logic for that is here. So what we do is we get all of the instances in the group and then we check if other instances have a higher index than we do. And if that's the case, then we return false and we know we're not on top. So what is this index? If I hold control and click on it, we'll get a definition. So this returns the node's index, i.e. its position among the siblings of its parents. And this defines the draw order in Godot. So in a scene, if we have a look at this, this scene here, star three will be drawn on top of star two and star two will be drawn on top of star one. This is fine for our purposes. You might need to change the is on top to take into account the Z index and, and things like that. But for the purpose of this example, it works fine. I'm not really sure of a more elegant solution than that uh, to determine what is drawn on top of another. So if you have any suggestions, I'd, I'd welcome them. Absolutely. So if this instance is on top, we set this private variable dragging equal to true, and we take note of the actual position of the event. Now that we've got dragging equal to true, if we go over to our global input event, now this takes input from anywhere, 
It could be anywhere in the scene. Now you might think why I put this logic in the input function instead of on input event. That's because if you're dragging around a shape and you move the mouse very quickly, the mouse cursor is going to move out of the collision area and then the on input event won't fire. So that's why I put this logic in the input function instead. So if we're not dragging, we are not concerned with doing any kind of input. So we just return from the function. If the mouse button is released or we release a touch, then we set the dragging to false and we don't move the instance. However, if there is mouse motion, then that's where we use our dragging logic here. I'm not really gonna explain this right here. It's the same as the other one in the other video. I'll put a link in the description below. And that's all there is to it, really. The source code for this is in the description below. So if you want to poke around, steal it for your game, that's fine, no problem. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Thanks so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this content, please give me a thumbs up and a cheeky subscribe. That will help the channel out lots and lots. So have a great day and I'll catch you next time. Cheers. Thank you.